So uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, so I'm, I'm going to start talking about our own experience. Um, as Mark was um, telling you, I come from Puerto Rico. We deal basically with Hispanic population. So, um, and I'm going to share the challenges that we've had, also what has worked and what hasn't worked for us. Um, so before starting, let me just um, make you an invitation. So, uh, buenos días a todos. Soy el doctor Andrés Díaz. Quiero invitarlos a que todos estudien fotónica. Es la carrera del futuro. Muchas gracias. Okay, so what was wrong with that? There are many things wrong with that, but let's start with the first one, obvious <coughs> one. I was talking fast. Yeah, that's right. And I was talking in Spanish. Spanish. So everyone understood everything, right? No. Some. Some, yes. <laughs> Okay, más o menos. So of course, that's the, that's the main, you know, the first barrier, you know, could be language. And of course, this is, this is a, a, I mean, a, a very uh, clear, you know, barrier. But let me just translate this to English. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Andres Diaz, and I want you all to study photonics. It's the career of the future. Thank you. Okay. Exactly. So the, what's wrong with that? First, not too compelling. Anyone else? What is photonics? Exactly. I'm talking in jargon. So what's photonics? So people are start, will start uh, asking, okay, why, why should I st study that? What is photonics? This guy hasn't told me anything. Also, how did I introduce myself? Doctor. Doctor. That helps? No. No. Also, what am I, what, what am I wearing? Exactly, that helps? Doesn't help if I want to reach you know, a, a certain population. My demeanor may not help also. Um, so those are just some of the barriers uh, which we are faced every day when we try to reach out you know, to recruit and to educate uh, people, uh, especially you know, if it's a minority, in our case, uh, Hispanics. So I'm going to talk a little bit about, first, where I'm coming from. So I'm from Universidad Metropolitana, Metropolitan University in Puerto Rico. Um, it's, uh, we have 13,000, almost 14,000 uh, 14, students, um, five campuses. The main campus is in San Juan. We have you know, other campuses around the island. 95% uh, of our students are Hispanic. And of that 95%, 90% are from Puerto Rico, 10% are from other countries, uh, neighboring uh, Dominican Republic, and we have South America, Colombia is uh, one that's very big, and uh, some Central American um, uh, countries also. Uh, specifically, I work at uh, Puerto Rico Photonics Institute. We are part of the School of Environmental Affairs. What we do here in, uh, at the Puerto Rico Photonics Institute, um, we do uh, photonics education, we do try to do whenever we have a little bit of time research, and we do outreach programs uh, in Puerto Rico. Um, we are the only institute of our kind in Puerto Rico in the Caribbean. We got some foundational support from the university, which has supported us incredibly, and also from uh, Puerto Rican institutions, as the Puerto Rico Development Industrial um, uh, a Company and the Puerto Rico Science, Technology, um, and Research Trust. And uh, right now, we have uh, a training program supported by a DOL uh, TACT grant. So this is one of these acronyms. I'm not going to even uh, say it because uh, I don't really remember all the letters and you won't remember it after I say it. Uh, but anyway, in this presentation, what I want you to think about is not that I'm presenting some information about what I do in Puerto Rico, but think about you know the strategies, the information I'm presenting you, if those are going to work for you, if you've tried them, if you haven't. First is, you know, what is the market demanding? So in our case, I'm here going to talk a little bit about photonics. Uh, there's a lot of demand right now because, of, for example, in the manufacturing process, we use lasers all the time. So there are many, many instances uh, where it's used. We have to train people and people really want to get ahead. So to grow its economy, uh, we need to create new opportunities. And this is an area, specifically photonics, where there are lots of opportunities. Now, even though in this area there are a lot of opportunities, we're facing a situation that's probably faced by some of your students or your prospective students in one way or another. Um, here, we've had um, many Puerto Ricans leaving the island. In the last 10 years, 
um, almost half a million Puerto Ricans have left Puerto Rico to come here to the U.S. That means that enrollment in colleges has gone down. Uh, at uh, Universidad Metropolitana, we've been fortunate. Enrollment um, kept, was kept stable until last year. And last year, we were one of the last universities, actually, uh, that uh, were able to keep our numbers. Um, but it was, um, it was uh, it's really hard. So launching new programs, you know, it's hard. Enrolling new people is hard. The economic situation also has forced students to think it twice before taking a loan. Mm -hmm. So because of the uncertainty of the economic situation. People, uh, especially students that don't have access to, to federal aid, uh, because they already used it, for example, they are not going to, um, they're not, uh, you know, entering the university. We had, uh, when we launched the program in March, one of, one of our students, uh, a lady, uh, she, she couldn't pay for it. So she just, you know, we let her um, sit in the courses during the first two trimesters. And she's very good, she's very interested. She was going to register this officially this semester in, in, in January, but at the end she couldn't because she doesn't have the money. So she's trying to get it. Um, her fiance is trying to help her. Um, and uh, we launch um, a scholarship program, but still we don't have any money in there. Because, uh, you know, companies in Puerto Rico are hesitant. They, w they don't want to, you know, give money because of, of all, all the, of the economic situation and the uncertainty. So, um, and, uh, and she really wants to do it. And we have only uh, two, well, we, we, right now, we don't, we don't have her, we only have one uh, woman in, in our academic program. It's, right now we have 10 students, or, or, but uh, of, our, of the 10, it's only one, so because we don't have her. So it's, you know, it's a pity, it's really hard for us. Um, uh, but because of this situation, um, we, you know, we have to, to deal, you know, with this situation and uh, offer students a career that's good for them, where they can actually find, are going to find jobs. Um, and one of the things about the, uh, photonics is that, you know, you can become an entrepreneur. It's difficult in our economic situation, but that's another, um, another path. Even though there are challenges, we also have strengths and opportunities. Uh, you know, being a, a U.S. territory, it, it's, um, federal laws and regulations are applicable. So Puerto Rico is a bridge between the U.S. and Latin America also. Uh, we have our classes, we teach them in Spanish, but all the material is in English, even the slides, the exams, the homework questions. Students can answer in either Spanish or English. So that's interesting because we hope actually not only to, uh, first, we can do it, do it only in English. Students would not register in our program, basically. They would be afraid, and, and we learned it the hard way. So initially we started, you know, doing everything in English just to, we thought it would be a good, a good way to attract students to see, uh, because they would see that, you know, it's a, it's a program that's marketable and they, and they could come to mainly U.S. to work. Uh, but that was one of our mistakes. Yeah, it didn't work because people, even though they can understand and speak a little bit of English, they really prefer Spanish just because, you know, it's what they talk all the time. Now, in Puerto Rico, we have one advantage, and that is that 80 to 85 percent of high school graduates continue on to post-secondary education. So this is a very, very high percentage. Um, and it's, it's the case where, you know, um, a disadvantage, an economical disadvantage of students in Puerto Rico is converted into an advantage. Because of their economic situation, most students qualify for some, time, some type of federal aid. So, that, uh, so there's this culture where you have to go either to college or at least, you know, get a certificate. Our student demographics, so uh, right now we have one third of uh, displaced workers. So they have the, the, um, uh, this um, uh, trade assistance program. Uh, then we have combination of veterans, people looking for new careers and skills, and also we have high school grads. So it's a pretty diverse group. It has its challenges, but uh, we found that actually it's even better because you know the adult students help the high school students uh, from you know using their life experience and then the high school students or who just graduated from high school they have all this energy so that helps the adult students so it's been pretty good um, here 20 right now it's only 10 percent female um, and 100 percent latino now within our program we want to increase the number of students of course uh, that's why we have to think of course about what's our strategy what are our 
long-term goals. Um, so we do have to increase the number of students. Probably that's the goal of everyone here. Um, that's why we created, we went on to the associate's degree. We are actively working on retention. I'll share about this a little bit later. We are focusing on educational excellence. Uh, we have to deal with challenges because some of the students are not well prepared. And we found that actually since we are dealing, 80% um, of our students are adults, students who are coming back, some after 20 or 25 years. So basic algebra, basic math, they don't really have you know, those skills. So we have to deal with that. And then we have an outreach program. We have to create a awareness about what photonics is, what optics is. We have to uh, show people that there are opportunities in our field. Uh, we have to educate people. Probably you face the same, the same challenges. So everyone here is from IT, right? Yeah. yeah. So, but does everyone know what IT is? Or do you have to explain it to students? Or to prospective students, you know, when you recruit, right? You have to really explain it. As, as Anne was telling us at the beginning, you know, it changes over time. Yes. So you do really have to go and explain it. And, and we've heard, we've all heard about IT, but what is really IT? What am I going to study? If I go into a, an associate's degree, I'm going to do something different than if I go into an engineering uh, program, a uh, bachelor program. So, you know, those are challenges we've been faced with. Um, but we have also used our students to become ambassadors of our program. So they help us with recruiting. Actually, in one case, you know, a friend of one of our, of our students came into the program later. Um, we, they help us with you know, educational activities. So, and that's a, it's been an excellent way to actually um, grow. And um, of course, it's not the same thing if, if I go and teach a workshop to a group of high school students, but if a person that's younger than, you know, than I, that I am and that's you know, near their age and who speaks the same language as they do, if he or she goes there and uh, it's, it's much more powerful. So that's also, that also has really worked for us. Okay, so let me just talk a little bit about key points about the Hispanic population. Uh, Hispanics are the largest minority um, and or ethnic group in the US. Uh, right now it's 55 million, 17% of the population. Um, with, but in 20, 2060, the estimate is it's going to be 119 million, 28%. Now the median age is 28 compared to the median age of uh, you know, the non-Hispanic whites, which uh, is 43. The majority are of Mexican descent. So here we have 64% Mexican, 9% Puerto Rican. Actually, there are more Puerto Ricans living out of Puerto Rico in the mainland US than in Puerto Rico. Uh, so this 9% does not include US territories. Otherwise it will be, it will be higher. 8% uh, from Central America, 6% South American. I am originally from Colombia. So I came to the U.S. to study, to did my doctorate, and then I uh, worked in, uh, at Penn State for six years, and then went to Puerto Rico. 3% um, Cuban and 9% other. Now, one of the things that really strikes me is, as a group, we have the lowest uh, educational attainment. So in this graph, you know, this is the percentage of adults who have earned at least an associate degree, an associate <laughs> degree or higher. So compared to all the rest, uh, all of the other groups, Hispanics is just 22%. Asians, you know, we have the stereotype of Asians, 60%, 60 and then, you know, whites and African Americans. So, but, you know, there's hope. There's hope because uh, Latinos are more likely than any other group to enroll in community colleges. That's according to, this is our statistics from 2012. And also Latino college enrollment is projected to increase more than other groups. Some more statistics about uh, this, specifically about photonics. Uh, we see that Hispanic representation, 10, 14%. It has actually grown blue, is 2012. Red is tw uh, 2009. So we've seen that in photonics, our, our impact has grown. But if you take a look at, for example, this other graph, and this is um, sp uh, focus on women. So science and engineering bachelor's degrees <coughs> earned by Hispanic women. And, uh, you know, most bachelor degrees are in you know, psychology, social sciences, biology. But if you go to hard science, you know, physics, engineering, computer science, uh, especially computer science, you see here it's less than 2%. And it has not grown. The participation has not grown really from uh, 1995 
to uh, 2014. So these are sovereign statistics. Uh, here we see the representation of scientists and engineers you know, working in, in science and engineering occupations. In 2015, white men, 49%, white women, 18%. And then we go, you know, we start going down. Asian men, Asian women, black men, black women. And uh, Hispanic men and Hispanic women, 4% and 2%. If we compare, you know, black men, black women, Hispanic men and women to actually what percentage of the population, um, what, what's, you know, the, the percentage of, uh, the U.S. population ages 18 to 64, we see that, you know, all of us, we are underrepresented, you know, even by four times in the case of Hispanic and black women. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of work to be done in this area. Now, what situations are affecting us, uh, or prospective Hispanic uh, Latino students? This is just a list and it's incomplete, but some of the situations affecting us are, of course, the economic disadvantage. Many students, and we found it also in Puerto Rico, have to work while they're studying. And I, I'm pretty sure in your cases it's exactly the same thing, right? Uh, most students have to work, so there's this economic disadvantage. Uh, there's the political and social uncertainty. I don't have to talk to you about it. Uh, then there's the language barrier. And it's the language barrier, not only in terms of the, you know, speaking Spanish or English, but also in terms of as I mentioned before, either you know not talking the jargon, or um, uh, there is they don't have role models, you know, so they don't identify, or you know, with with uh, and don't see it, or we don't see ourselves going into STEM disciplines. Um, also, you know, all the prejudice, stereotype, bias, implicit bias, many times, systematic discrimination. So, and distribution of roles. And this may be implicit. And I remember taking a workshop a while back about um, recruiting women. And it's amazing, so many things that you say that you're, you're not really aware of. So the first step, of course, is raising aware, awareness. Become aware that you are even implicitly discriminate, discriminating uh, um, a population. Um, and this implies, for example, that Hispanics or blacks or women don't have a, a raw or innate talent for something. You know, to study, to go into IT, to study engineering, to go into physics, into STEM disciplines. Um, and affirmations such as, you know, let's not look at race and gender. Let's just only look at merit. You know, that seems like a very neutral kind of, of statement. But as I, I, I wrote it down, because it's a damaging perspective, because it implies there's a trade-off between, you know, diversity and excellence so and um, which is implicit here right so it's uh, I wanted to you know bring this um, I also already talked a little bit about uh, the lack of appropriate role models how can those situations uh, affect the student of course the students may not be as prepared as other populations on campus that's true with Hispanics it may have to do with their you know uh, where we're coming from it has to do also with a, there's a cultural disconnect that we have to address. Uh, the fact that um, I find um, many Hispanics still prefer to talk in Spanish because they don't feel comfortable talking in English. And then, you know, they group together in, uh, uh, in the uh, college campus. And then, you know, other students may just look at them weird or, uh, you know, it's, uh, th that may bring lo low self-esteem. And also that's going to, of course, increase the, the dropout rate. So one of the things that we really need to do is to not stigmatize, well, we have to reaffirm, do a lot of reaffirmation, but also uh, not show any condescending attitudes towards you know, our, our future students or our current students. Now, how to address the situation? These are just a couple of hints. You know, information is the key, basically, in approaching Latino, Hispanic students, and I guess any, any uh, minority. Uh, be prepared to provide information, an information package or a flyer, you know, with links. Um, these are some of the things that people may ask or may not want to ask because they are very controversial, but they do need this information. So, you know, ESL programs, um, economic student aid. So, 
you know, for those who qualify for this, tutoring and mentoring resources both on and off campus. So those are not contra controversial. Now, immigration information. What are my rights, you know? Um, what, are there any opportunities? Are, limit, there, are there limitations with my immigration status? This has to do with, you know, this topic about sanctuary, sanctuary cities. I know there's been a lot of uh, discussion here in Texas about sanctuary cities. And, uh, but, you know, and, and also there's been a lot of discussion late, lately about uh, DACA, um, DACA eligibility. And uh, there, you know, all the millions of uh, uh, children who came here to the U.S. illegally when they were very young. So can they study? Can they, you know, are they going to be deported? What's going to happen with them? So all this uncertainty, you know, we should be able to provide at least some information or links. Uh, now, we don't want to patronize. So what we could do is, even if we don't present some of these links, um, specifically or you know but if we have some kind of uh, flyer with information with links you know it would be great because that way uh, we give the students or prospective students some um, <coughs> peace of mind you know um, and of course invite parents and family of prospective students to be involved in the process so need to convince and um, we are Part of what we do through our open houses that we do in Puerto Rico is to is invite the whole family over to our labs and have them, you know, look at the demos and the presentations. Some tips, be prepared to provide this information verbally or as a written material. Ideally, have bilingual information prepared because even if the students, students proficient in English, their parents may not be. As I told you before, we found this out also the hard way because for our prospective students, they also took the material to their parents and their parents many times are not proficient in English. Um, also find partners, you know, don't do everything yourselves. This, been, this has been really huge with us because we wouldn't have, you know, been uh, able to make it up to this point if we, have, if we hadn't partnered with other institutions. So, and within our same institution, you know, with all the uh, programs. Um, so I'm going to here, for example, also we have an opportunity with Hispanic cham Chambers of Commerce, radio and TV sp stations, consulates. So th just those are some, uh, some ideas. Okay, now very quickly, I'm going to go over pra best practices in recruiting and retention. What has worked for us? We know that educational and outreach programs are different from recruiting, but I'm going to mix them because that's what we found out that we need to educate people about photonics, about STEM, you know, people really don't, don't know about what's STEM, what's science, what's technology. What will I be doing if I study one of these, uh, um, you know, careers? Um, so we have to sometimes mix them together. So uh, we do all kinds of activities from, for K through 12 students. We do workshops for teachers, uh, outreach activities for the general public. Uh, we did some, uh, two videos uh, that are on our website. We have research projects also, and we try to find some kind of um, educational component, an outreach component for, to this, uh, for these research projects. Uh, publicity in social and written media, radio and TV, this has worked really well. And we also try to uh, address certain populations, specific populations such as veterans. Our recruiting program, um, we have activities for high school students and workshops for high school teachers. We have grants that have helped really with this. Um, the National Center for Education, Optics and Photonics, Optech, has given us um, two grants for uh, two consecutive years, 15,000 each year, but that has really helped us because we've been able to hire a part-time person that goes out to schools. Uh, our DOL grant, even though it's focused on, um, on veterans and uh, TA eligible participants, you know, there's this other components that we can also use. And we've had, we've used grants or part of grants from the Puerto Rico Science, Technology and Research Trust and PRITCO uh, to um, also help us with the, the recruiting program and also the marketing part, of course. With our outreach program, we want to reply to the economic upheaval and situation in, that's affecting the local workforce in Puerto Rico by providing training and education. Now, our educational outreach program is based, we have actually right now more than 22 demos. Some are developing how, some are commercial. Uh, we, we deal with optics and light, so it's very, you know, we can do lots of things. So the idea is that once we decided what to do, we have this box of demos. And then we, we already have prepared presentations that go from like 20 minutes to three hours. So whenever we're invited by a school to go and make a presentation, 
or go make our presentations to teachers, we already have everything prepared. So it's very easy for us to go. We've done uh, two day and actually three day workshops also. So it's very easy to, you know, once you have this, you have to do it once and then it's, it's very useful. Some of the activities we, we do with uh, high school, with K through 12 students in general, lab tours and open house, we've participated in summer camps organized not by us, but by other institutions. And then we just participate there. Here, for example, we have uh, in this summer camp, actually we had, um, you know, children from five years old all the way to 16 year, um, from uh, yeah, ninth grade, 10th grade, actually, um, going to that summer camp, school visits, and then any other kind of events, such as Manufacturing Week, a Career Day, for example, the Puerto Rico Museum of Art had a Career Day. We went there, we had a table, we gave a talk, so lots of things that you can do. Because of our limitations, we don't do as much outreach for uh, you know, smaller children, but um, something that, that we do, or we try to do at least. Uh, workshops for teachers, so we've partnered with the uh, Math and Science Partnership Program, uh, we've given you know two-day workshops and right now we've impacted more than 700 teachers in Puerto Rico so that's really positive right now the teachers they call us you know can you can you come to our school can you make a presentation we have this science fair or science day or career day and uh, the problem is we don't have enough resources to, to reply but you know it's good because it's they become ambassadors of, of, of uh, and not only for for tonics but in general for STEM so that's good General activities where we partner with, you know, the Arecibo Observatory. We've been to malls, job fairs, you know, all kinds of stuff uh, to do this. Uh, we developed two videos. You know, you can see this one. It's a more of a professional version that has all the effects <coughs> and everything. Uh, so we started small and then, you know, we just kept growing. We already had the script. We already had everything. So we could expand it a little bit. And, of course, now we have here professional act actress. Um, it's important for women to actually explain everything. She is extremely convincing. So she just, you know, read the script and then did her job. She doesn't know anything about photonics, although we did explain. She learned a little bit, of course, but she's very, very convincing. She is Latina. So, you know, that helped. That helped a lot in our... And then with this, we were able to produce a 30-second 30, 30 demo. Uh, we also have some of our research that we do. We partner with um, computer science students in their bachelor's degree in our university. So we've done some software and then we use this to show some things for, you know, to teachers. Um, and in our, in our own educational program, we use this software. We've also done, you know, publicity, radio, TV, uh, things that didn't work. We spent last year, last summer, uh, we were going to start our, well, we had just started our um, certificate program. So we did, uh, it was like a 30 second promo in a movie theater, right? So we, it, it was lot of, lots of work. It costed, I mean, the cost was quite high. It was, uh, it showed up, it was the premiere of X-Men something, one, the one that was, you know. So it was that first week when it had just come out. And we did it in, in uh, two theaters, uh, in two different locations, three, the three theaters per location. Um, there was a contact information at the end. We did not receive a single call after we showed it. So definitely did not work. Now, this year, for example, at the beginning, before, before um, during the registration period, we did, uh, Jonathan did an interview, a radio interview. That was paid by the university. It was only five minutes, but um, we got two calls from that radio interview. And then that same week, we went and we did a, a TV show, one of those morning TV shows. It was free, but we had to take 15 people, you know, because they had to show, you know, people in the show, right? I mean, the, the audience. So we had to take, so, you know, all of us, we invited our students through the university. We even got some more students to come and it was free. And we only had a minute to give information about our program, explaining what photonics is, you know, what we can do with it. But we got one call. After, after, and then and another person that was interested. I mean, one, one, one person who actually registered for the, for the course and started this January, and then another person that's interested who we hope, you know, will start um, either in March or our associates program in, in August. So that has worked, and it's not too costly. I mean, it's, and then Facebook, Facebook, Twitter, that has really helped many of our students 
have come that way. Partnerships, remember, partnerships, so all kinds of partnerships with museums, with other universities, other institutions, and uh, also events like the International Year of Light in 2015 that really help us to, uh, out to have an outreach program. And uh, that also helped us to, um, even though we hadn't started our academic programs back then, you know, uh, we did a lot of outreach to teachers, so it, it really was good for us. Um, okay, very quickly, our retention program. Um, we have a dedicated career coach. We call it activities coordinator. It's really helped us. You know, she does recruiting of prospective students, their follow-up, coordinates, interviews, registration. It's the go-to person for all us, our students, you know, prospective and our current students. Uh, she has a file on each student also and organizes all kinds of workshops like uh, resume workshops, um, mock interview practices, visit to industries, you know, all kinds of things. So we still don't have, our numbers are very small, so we really don't have the statistics, you know, of, uh, but we're pretty sure from the experience of other groups that this really works because it's this individualized attention. And we try to, you know, as far as we can, if the student has any kind of problem, even economic, we try to see what we can do. Sometimes we can't do anything, unfortunately, but, you know. Now, um, this position should not be contingent on an enrollment quota, of course, and its existence should be justified by retention statistics uh, alone. Sometimes this is difficult to do, but, you know, that's the, the ideal thing. I will end with uh, collaborations and partnerships. We had lots of collaboration foundational supporting grants for our institute. We use part of this for recruiting and education. Local, national, and professional societies have helped us with material. Uh, state level organizations and nonprofits, educational institutions, other uh, besides ours. We have an industry affiliates program. It's been a lot of work, but you know, we, it's been good for our internship program. They have helped, helped us. Um, we partner also with our institutions for the academic component and um, we've also partnered specifically for recruitment with some institutions. Uh, this is just to give you an idea. These are specific institutions in Puerto Rico, some are professional institutions all over the U.S., but for our area, I'm pretty sure you have yours. So this is just some of the doors that we've, you know, tried to open. It takes time, but just some ideas, you know, museums, um, science communicators, you know, all this, and uh, private companies. And for recruitment, we work with the TAA program, with the Mathematics and Science Partnership program, with the Workforce Innovation Opportunity uh, program, with the National Guard, and also with the transition. We work with the U.S. Army Transition Assistance Program. So uh, they invite us. We give talks about, you know, once you, as a veteran, you can come to and study with us why you should do it. Uh, so this partnership, you know, some of them with the National Guard, we're just starting with them, but you know, it's, um, it's been a little bit hard sometimes to get into some of this, uh, but it's, it's been really good. Let me just finish by talking about this. We are part of, of, of this uh, National Center for Education in Optics and Photonics. So um, we meet before each high tech conference, but being part of this student recruitment working group has allowed us to prepare materials, different colleges prepare different materials, and, and we share them. You know, we, uh, the material usage can be tracked, we share experiences and best practices, and that means that we don't have to do everything ourselves. So these are some examples. We have, for example, they, they develop a career videos, where 30 second, one minute videos, and they have this flyer with a link to the videos. Uh, we use that, we also adapted those flyers also to, uh, to give more general information in Spanish. So meaning we didn't have to do all the artwork, we just had to change the information that was very good, you know, of uh, infographics like this with uh, statistics. And we just, uh, well, some, actually the second one we've translated to Spanish and uh, put in the salary information in Puerto Rico, which unfortunately is much lower. Um, math for optics and photonics, you can do this. Um, we've created actually three handouts um, for, to take to math teachers so that they can introduce optics and photonics to their students in class. So there's a problem that here's, for example, with the Pythagorean theorem and the solution, you know. So teachers, you give material to teachers, they're always looking for material, and it's a good way to introduce. Um, we have mi military veteran brochures, so you can use those, and you can just need to insert 
the logo of your college. This is actually our brochure that we did similar to the one that they already had. We just translated it. We used both Spanish and English. Um, there's also this um, content idea form that we share, how, how we're using our material, and success stories also. We are creating our own success stories. We want to do some with our new graduates, with our first graduates. Document everything, absolutely everything because it's, it's going to be useful, and then show that information through maps, statistics, graphs. This is in a shared drive, it's just an Excel worksheet. Uh, here we have different tabs, for example, visits of schools to our labs, uh, schools that we go and visit, workshops and continuing education um, uh, you know, that we do, visits to veterans or to TAA people, outreach events, um, also our affiliates, industry affiliates, and conference we attend, things like that. So, and then we have a summary, a summary tab. This is summary table and this is the population uh, student population impacted so you know here we got the statistics k through 12 students how how many of those were students and also we have a uh, information form where you know students that are interested in our program or people interested in our program just fill it out so how many we got from each event and then here are the totals right so that's that's been really good and i think i spent most of my time. So. And uh, thank you very much. <laughs> for that information.